we stand tonight amazed at your power, amazed at your strength, amazed at your glory. So tonight we offer the name of Jesus.
No, oh, y'all got y'all phones up, but I'm old school. I have to carry my book. I'm not good with technology, so when it don't work, I'm in trouble. So long as I got my book, I'm all right. John 20, 19, 23, and it reads, Then the same day at evening being the first day of the week when the doors were shut, where the disciples were assembled for fear of the Jews, came Jesus and stood in the midst and said unto them, Peace be unto you. And when he had so said, he showed unto them his hand and his side. Then were the disciples glad when they saw the Lord. Then said Jesus to them again, Peace be unto you. As my Father hath sent me, even so send I you. And when he had said this, he breathed on them and said unto them, Receive ye the Holy Ghost. Whomsoever sins ye remit, they are remitted unto them. And whosoever sins ye retain, they are retained. May God have a blessing to the reading and hearing of his word. I want to talk to you from the subject, I ain't missing church. <laughs> All right. Amen. 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 I ain't missing church. Church service is usually an hour and a half. Come on, preacher, come on. And there's a lot that goes on within those, within that hour and a half. And, and you miss a lot when you don't come to church. Uh, I know we have excuses for not coming. The world has helped us with those excuses. Children got sporting events on Sunday, concerts on Sunday. And so we miss a few Sundays, and eventually church is no longer important. Say it, preacher. And, and the foundation begins to crumble. But I'm not talking, but I'm not going to let anyone or anything cause me to miss church. All right, all right. Because I believe, I have, I believe and I have experienced it where God met me at church. And not only did he meet me at church, but he met my needs while I was there. Amen. Can I get a witness this Amen. morning? When I look at a lot of churches, and especially here, we have to collectively work together to build a foundation that our youth will remember and grow in. I grew up in church. I want to take you on a little journey with me. Right here in Mount Zion. Amen. Mother used to make me go, but eventually I fell in love and I wanted to go on my own. While my brothers was going to the boys club, I was coming to youth meetings. Come on. I was attending junior mission. The, the Walkers, the Lowry's, the Williams's, the Smiths, the Walters, the Youngs, the Haynes. The, the reason so many of us are still here, the foundation was laid. We fell in love with Mount Zion because Mount Zion had the leadership that showed us the love of Christ. Amen. And so today I'm standing here on that solid rock. Yes, sir. Junior Mission, Layman's, Junior Deacon. Pastor Bushline would meet us on Saturday mornings, take us to Buffalo and play basketball. I, I even enjoyed afternoon service. All right. Y'all remember getting on that old school bus? Deacon Hands, not John Mark. I'm talking about Wilbur T. He, he, he would fly us over to Lackawanna. I said fly because those of us who were riding with him, they knew how fast he was going. Pastor would preach, choir would sing. He got a love offering. Afterwards, we got ice cream. Sometimes we even got McDonald's. So we enjoyed church because they showed us the love and the support a young person needs to see because a young person can't get everything out of Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Yes. Say it, say it. They need to hear you say something about love. Mm -hmm. They need to hear you give some support. So, so that's what we saw, that's what we, that, that's what we had. The, the, even vacation Bible school, vacation Bible school, we had a, a, a teacher named Miss Tubb. Y'all remember Miss Tuck. 
And Miss Tuck used to have a ruler one in our class. But you know, that ruler didn't stop me from coming to church. Junior high school, I was coming to prayer meetings, watching the move of God. There was no music. But people were shouting about the goodness of the Lord. Amen. Amen. See, see, the church today, we got to push people. Same. We gotta push people. Same. We gotta push Same. people. But all they did was all they did was just crank up a song. Victory is mine. Woo! Victory today is mine. Yeah, yeah. Huh? I, I told old Satan, get thee behind, and before you know it, they would shout. Yeah. Wasn't no drum beating, no organ. Didn't nobody tell them to shout. But, but the church today, we gotta be pushed, y'all. We, we got to be pushed. When, when you got the love of God on the inside, don't nobody got to tell you to say thank you. Amen. 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 I had a revival. And, and the Lord moved in my, in, in my life. And I was uh, probably in my first few years of high school. And tears began to flow. And I didn't quite understand what was going on. Say it. But, but I realized then that that was God mm -hmm, mm -hmm. working in my life. Right. And, and so as I stayed and as I be began to, to stay in church, I, I, I got a little older and started, started DJing. <laughs> Me and a couple of friends got us an apartment on Union Park. <laughs> All right. And about a month ago, I went to one of those, about, about six, seven months ago, I went to one of those friends and said, you know, the Lord had called me into ministry and I was going into ministry. And, and he said to me, you know, man, I remember. I, I, I remember when you used to come in in the wee hours on Sunday morning. Come on, preacher. After being out all night. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And it didn't matter what time it was, you was always getting up and going to Sunday school. Yeah, yeah, say it, say it. But, because I had fell in love. With, with the Lord. And, and that started because of what they showed me earlier. See, see, see what I'm saying is, 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 is as a church, we, we have to make sure that we are laying the foundation because Amen. we won't be here forever. Amen. And if the foundation isn't laid, where is the church going to be? Huh? Our, our, our children will be lost because they don't know the Lord. Amen. They don't know that, that there's a God who will fight their battle. Huh? They don't know that there's a God who will give them peace in the midst of their storm. Huh? We, we, we have to be that light. We have to be that light. We have to be that light. So, so I just wanted to take y'all on that little journey because I, I, I hung around and I stayed there. I stayed there. Even when Pastor Bushline spoke one morning and said he had four men that he was going to put on trial to be deacons. And, and, and I was not one of those men. I just was sitting in the audience and heard him say it. Then he said, and if, and if you think God is calling you to that ministry, you come and see me later. Mm. Two weeks went by where the Lord was pushing me and pushing me and something was troubling me in my spirit. And finally I went to him and said, I want to serve. Mm. So it was five of us on trial. And, and that was my first experience of, of, of seeing or, or, or understanding that, that, that sometimes church people say things and they don't mean to hurt you as if they don't understand. And, and, and so the dispute was because I was a single man in my 20s, because I was a single man, many felt that scripture said I had to be married to be a deacon. So that became an issue. Because I wasn't married, but what the scripture says is he should be, he should have one wife. Then say he had to be married, he said he should have one wife. In other words, he should be running around with a lot of women. That's what the scripture was saying. That's what the scripture was saying. So after a year and a half, I was ordained as a deacon and I served as a deacon until I, uh, the Lord called me into to, to the ministry. But, but I said all that because hopefully while I was talking about my journey, you thought about yours. All right. Because the building is not the church. You are. 
And we need to be prepared and equipped in order to prepare someone else. You can't tell somebody something you don't know. You can't take somebody where you've never been. So in order to prepare someone else, we, 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 we got to be ready. You know, we sing that song, Lord, prepare me to be a sanctuary. Amen, amen. And, and a lot of us are just singing because we really don't want to be a sanctuary. Well, yeah. A lot of us are just singing because we really don't want the responsibility of being a sanctuary. But when you accept Christ as your Savior, you are supposed to become a sanctuary because you represent the church. The church is not this building. The church is the personalities of all these people that's gathered today. And all it takes is one of us to discourage one person. Scripture lets us know that God is able. And this particular scripture lets us know that not only is God able, but God will give you the power and the ability to do just what he's calling you to do. People need to see the church in you. Amen. And in order for people to see that, the first thing we got to do is be obedient okay. to the word of God. Yes. Yeah, we can worship at home. You know, that, that's this new thing now. Mm -hmm. We don't need to go to church. We can Same. worship at home. Same. Same. Uh, I can worship in my car. But the scripture says, forget Same. not to assemble yourselves yeah. Yeah. together. And then Matthew in 1820 was talking, he, he talking to his disciples, he said, but when two or three are gathered together in my name, I am there in the midst of them. It's letting us know that there's strength in numbers. There's strength in numbers. The church is a place that should be filled with the personality of Jesus Christ. Well, who said in John 14 and 6, I am the way, the truth and the light, no man coming unto the Father but by me. So we, so if we want to get to the Father, we've got to come by the church. And I'm not talking about this building. I'm talking about us. We have to be the ones to encourage people and show them the way. Hmm? So I ain't missing church. I ain't missing church. I ain't missing the opportunity to be in the midst of one who says he's a very present help. Uh, he, he said he's a very present help. You, you don't have to wait on him. He said he's a very present help. But whatever you need, God said, I am a very present help. Yes, sir. Very present help. As a young man growing up in the church, the message to me was clear. God is a good God. God is a great God. And he's worthy to be yes. praised. Yes, sir. I, I, I have learned the word of God is true. And when God and his son Jesus, whom the church was built on, becomes the center of your life, when you make it all about him, the relationship comes with guarantees. Yeah, yeah, yeah. When you make it all about God, the relationship comes with guarantees. The, the hatred in your heart will change to love. That, that, that's guaranteed. You, you, you'll be able to pray for those who despitefully use you. Mm -hmm. That's a guarantee. Amen. You, you can ask what you will in his name and wait for the miracle. That's a guarantee. The, the, the peace that passes all understanding is yours. That's a guarantee. Unspeakable joy will flood your soul. That's a guarantee. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He, he'll fight your battles for you. That's a guarantee. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and when the warfare is over, spend eternity in the kingdom of yes, God. Sir. That's a guarantee. Yes, a crown with many stars awaits you. That's a guarantee. You see, some of you ain't saying nothing. Maybe you're not sure. Say it. Maybe you're not sure, but you can be sure. Yes. You, you, you can be sure that Jesus paid it all. Yes, Romans 10, 9, all he tells us to do is confess with our mouth. Yes, yes. The Lord Jesus Christ and believe in thy heart God raised him from yes, the dead and he yes, says thou yes, shalt be yes, yes. saved. Yes, sure. But you got to build a relationship with him. Yes, yes. You got to take on his personality. Yes. You, you got to properly represent the church. Yes. So, so I ain't missing church. 
I ain't missing church. In, 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 in the text, in the text, I'm going to tell you why I'm not missing church. Jesus had been crucified. He died that Friday, but the text takes us to where Jesus is now risen from the dead. Mm -hmm. Remember, he said, if you destroy this temple in three days, I'll raise it up. Yes, sir. It, it's the third day, and the disciples meet at the house. The door is locked out of fear for their lives. But Thomas, one of the disciples, is not dead. Thomas is absent from the assembly. I, I don't know his excuse. Maybe he decided to sleep in. Well, well. Maybe he had a family thing going on. Or maybe he was discouraged with the church. You know, we sometimes get discouraged with the church. Jesus had just died, so maybe he had became discouraged. You know, we get discouraged over a lot of little things. You know, right. Quiet wasn't singing my song. I'm staying at home. Yeah. Deacon Haynes always talking about get up, get up, get up. I ain't being bothered. I'm staying at home. Amen. Amen. But Jesus is risen. The disciples is, have come together. And Thomas, he ain't dead. Mm -hmm. And so as Jesus is talking to the disciples, he gives them six reasons why we shouldn't miss church. He gives them six reasons. And the first reason is, when you don't come to church, you miss his presence. There is nothing that can keep his presence out of the service. The Bible says the door was locked. Say it. And Jesus shows up. Whenever he gets ready to show up, take nothing or nobody keep him out. Scripture says he, he shows up. See, see, when you come to church, you should thank God for his presence. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Shouldn't matter who's preaching or who's yeah. saying it. God said, two or three gather in my name. Yeah, yeah. I'll be in the midst. I'll show up. We should come to church expecting an encounter with the Lord. When he shows up, his, his presence is the difference between church and a crowd. Yeah. Amen. He can show up on the street and turn a rally into a revival. His presence is different between a church and a social club. <laughs> Doors was locked. Say it. But he knows how to get in. Huh? He knows how to get in. Even if your mind is locked, your heart is locked, he knows how to get in. Huh? Trouble will come. Cause you to want to let him in. Huh? He knows how to break down barriers. Losing your job will cause you to want to let him get in. Losing your house will cause you to want to let him get in. Enough tears will make you shout hallelujah. See, when you miss church, you miss his presence. But, but not only do you miss his presence, but you miss his power. There it is in verse 19. No power on earth can keep him down. They crucified him on the cross. But he got him from the dead because he has all power. Yeah, yeah, yeah. President Trump has an office, but he has no real power. The, the governor, Como, he has an office, but he has no real power. Jesus has all power and all authority. And, and when you recognize who he is and recognize his presence and his power, it changes how we worship. We, we, we realize God can change my present situation when we realize all things are possible. Huh? Can I get a witness? All things are possible. I don't know what you're dealing with or what you're going through, but the Bible says he rose with all power. Healing power. Soul saving power. Delivering power. Holy Ghost power. Make you want to dance. Huh? Make you want to dance. Make you want to shout. Folk don't know what you're dancing about, but all things are possible. So I ain't missing church. Because I don't want to miss his presence. I don't want to miss his power. And thirdly, I don't want to miss his peace. Verse 19, he came in the room without opening the door, stood in the midst of them and being, after being crucified, and the very first thing he says to them is, peace be unto you. When you miss church, you miss the very answer you're looking for. Well, well. 
It could have been in the sermon that you didn't hear that day. Mad with somebody, so you stayed home. Listen, don't allow folks to cause you to miss your blessing. Yes, yes, yes. We've we, we, we got to stop. We've got to stop allowing people. We've got to stop allowing people to determine whether or not I'm going to church. Because I'm not coming to see you. I, I mean, I'm happy to see you. Good to see you. God bless you. You look great. But I'm coming because I want to see the Lord. Yes. I, I want to feel his power. Yes. I want to be in his presence. Anybody? I want to be in his presence. Yes. Because in the presence of the Lord, there is liberty. In the presence of the Lord, there's peace. Yes. So I don't know about you. I need the peace of God. Yes. You, you ever been in a situation where you couldn't sleep at night? God has a peace that surpasses all understanding. Yes. Folks don't know why you're still speaking to them as bad as they talked about you. But that's the kind of peace God will give you. Amen. Huh? He, he says, my peace I give not like the world gives. This peace, this, this peace, this joy. Reverend Jesse used to sing that song, this joy I have, world didn't give it to me, world can't take it away. Knowing that the world can't take it away, that's the peace he gives you. Can't nobody mess with what God gave you. The problem is you don't have no confidence in it. And because you don't have no confidence in it, people take it all the time. You run around here talking about you saved, Holy Ghost feeling, and you're always crying and whining. But you ought to have some peace in your life if you truly got God in your life. Scripture says peace that surpasses all understanding. All understanding. This peace, this joy, even when you ain't got no money in your pocket, you still have peace. All right. No food, but you got peace. That's what God would do for you. Huh? That's what God would do for you. That's what God would do for you. God has to put his peace in your situation to make whatever you put your hands on make sense for you. Be because a lot of things we don't understand. But the peace of God gives you that understanding. The peace of God. So I'm not worried about who likes me or who don't like me. Amen. I'm worried about who think I can sing or can't sing. I got the peace of God. And because I have the peace of God, all I can do is just glorify him. And when I, be, when I go home, I'm all right. Yes, yes, yes. Amen. It's good to say, the Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I yes, fear? Yes, yes. Lord is the strength of my life. Whom shall I be afraid? Yes. It does not matter what you own. If you're satisfied with yourself, yes, yes. satisfied with yourself and the reason a lot of us can't give God glory because we are not at peace with our own self. Well, well. Say it. Miss too much church. Miss too much church. But so, so when you miss church, when you miss church, you miss his presence. You miss his power. You miss his peace. And fourth, you miss his praises. He, he showed them his hands and his side. Then were the disciples glad after they knew it was really Jesus. Well, then were they glad. They, you, you, you see, you can't praise God unless you're glad. 